Wars fans, your long wait is nearly over. The third Star Wars movie opens on May 25th in major cities across the country. And Mark Hamill, who plays the role of Luke Skywalker, is with us to tell us about the latest space adventure in The Return of the Jedi. Good morning. Good morning. As I understand it, you just recently saw the movie in a big theater with an audience all around you. How, what did you think? It was very exciting. When, we, when you do a film that has as many special effects as our films have in them, uh, it takes months and months and months. I finished it nearly a year ago. And, of course, I saw the drawings and the conceptual art of what it was supposed to look like, and I saw the miniatures and the models, and I'd visit the special effects uh, complex in Northern California. But to see it all together with, with John Williams' score and an audience of people cheering and hissing the villain, it, it, was, it was overwhelming. It's really exciting. Besides their reaction, though, to the film as a whole, how is it to see their reaction to you, to how you portray that character? Well, I've been very lucky in that my character has gone through such changes from the first film. I mean, I never really felt like I played the same part over and over again. In the first one, he was very young and uh, the quintessential callow youth. And in the second film, he grew up a little bit. And in this one, he's a full-fledged, card-carrying Jedi. <laughs> Does their reaction change your opinion of your performance at all? Oh, sure. It's always interesting to see how they react to things. I mean, in the very nature of the film, it is, it's a fairy tale, and a lot of the dialogue is very arch. When you're doing the film, you have to believe it yourself. But a year and a half later, sitting with popcorn in a theater... Watching, yeah. I've forgotten how funny the movie was. And we should, on that note, we really must take a look at This is where Luke and Princess Leia are about to chase several of the enemy soldiers through a force. Watch this. Now, those shots where you actually feel like you're, you're, you can see yourself going through the forest, how did you see that? It's all magic. <laughs> I've got a couple parked outside, but... Uh, <laughs> no, I, it, actually, when you're doing the filming of that, obviously we're not uh, sitting through the forest like that, but you believe that you are. I mean, it's, it's as close as you'll ever come to it. So it was rigged up in such a way that, that, that it would... Uh, bank and 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 move about and what, all the rest what about, of it. But what about the shots where we actually are put in a position of feeling uh, like we're going through? The point of view shots yeah. were taken uh, by the man who invented the Steadicam, uh, which is a camera that has uh, the ability to. Well, you, you hold it, and I think it has something to do with. Uh, it's almost like a gyroscope. It, the lens is very steady. If you walk with it, it remains very smooth. And is he on a track or something? Or? He had an assistant with his arms around his waist, working as his eyes, because he was looking through the lens. And he was just running as fast as he could through the forest. Just running through the forest? Right, but it was, you know, the film was speeded up. I hate, I shouldn't give away all this magic, <laughs> should I? <laughs> That's right. How do you prepare, though, for a role like that, where you're, you're having to react to things that you aren't seeing, and well, that you won't see until they're actually put onto the film? Well, uh, you, you have to make sure that you know exactly what they're going to do. They never really ask you to, to react to things that, that uh, aren't there unless, you're, unless they explain to you exactly what it's going to look like. They usually show you artwork and so forth and stories. There's a lot work. of homework then ahead of time. Absolutely. But uh, the difficult thing about that sort of uh, acting is that once it's all put together, people really don't think you're doing anything. They think that you're riding on a speeder bike and uh, that uh, the tension 
is from all the trees flying by your face. Yeah. They don't realize that it's all just in a studio with blue screens. That's right. So if you do your job right, uh, no one knows you're doing anything. <laughs> no one knows how good you are. <laughs> I should say, thinking of how people react, there are some pretty grotesque monsters in the movie, I, I understand, especially at the beginning. Is it, I mean, you have a little boy. Was your little boy four years old? Is it okay? Would you take, let him see it? Are you going to let I him was, see it? I was afraid to let him see King Kong, and he loved it. You know, <laughs> I tried to turn it off, and I said, this is too scary for you, and he just gave me a very sort of skeptical look. He loved it. <laughs> They're so smart, aren't they? They four are. Years old. Oh, we should say, too, you do have another, a new little one, right. very new. Right, he Griffin. was born, we were on the road doing the national tour of Amadeus, and he was born in San Francisco. March 4th? 4th, and then three days later, we opened in Chicago, so I haven't really had a breather. And right now, he's still playing Mozart here in New York, and Amadeus, I know that you're off to rehearsal. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. And we'll be right back.